developing tonight one dangerous hour in D.C., four different shootings in a matter of minutes. Thankfully, no one died, but once again, we're talking about yet another violent day in D.C. Yeah, our John Henry is actually in Northwest where a vigil about violent crime is supposed to get underway, and it was scheduled before all of this happened, right, John? Yeah, that's right. Locals here in the Petworth neighborhood here in Sherman Circle are gathering to demand this is where I stay at when I'm in D.C. sometimes. Pet work. I know exactly where this is at, man. What's up? Nice neighborhood? Hell no. Nah. This is the gliders, <laughs> gliders have gentrified it. This, okay, is historically, okay. this is historically, well, no, don't get me wrong. It looks nice. Like the houses, is residential. There's no projects. It's just all like single family home big structures nice like it looks like sesame street you know what i'm saying or fucking the cosby show but sons lived there it was a hundred percent sun neighborhood in the 90s and the 2000s and then okay. since like 2000s glider has been slowly slowly so now it's probably 50 50 glider son okay okay you know what i'm saying so yeah um but the violence, the sons are committing the same amount of violence because they're not being prosecuted. So, you, like I said before, you don't need as many sons to, to make the same amount of crime as you did back in the day. Because back in the day, they would, sons would commit crime, they get locked up, they get sent to jail, then more sons would commit crime. Now, a small group of sons can commit all the, the same kind of crime because they're going to yeah. keep getting out the next day. Real shit, real shit. Yeah, that's right. Locals here in the Petworth neighborhood here in Sherman Circle are gathering to demand an end to gun violence and also remember someone who was gunned down in this community just two days ago. As you said, this happened on a particularly violent day yet again here in D.C. There were five shootings here in D.C. And as you said, though fortunately all non-fatal, but as you said, four of them happened within one hour. 70 has another shoot. From 11.30 to 12.30. The district's problems with gun violence were put on display for everyone to see yet again. No, no, breathing. Bullets grazed four people in four locations. The 3700 block of J Street Northeast. The 600 block of 46th Place Southeast. 1500 block of Good Hope Road Southeast. And the 2600 block of Bernie Place Southeast. Four shootings in one hour. Wow, it's, it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous, yeah. Northeast resident Yolanda Brown fears for the safety of innocent people just going about their day. We have to be mindful that we have little children out here, kids, people, aunts, every day. As you heard, she was disturbed by the speed of today's events. After all, DC experienced five shootings Friday, just 13 hours into the day. But perhaps what may be even more troubling is that that total is still fewer than the number of shootings D.C. has observed on average just 132 days into the year. MPD data shows typically D.C. sees a little more than seven shootings each day in 20. <laughs> yeah, dog. Seven, seven shootings a day. In the nation's capital with the strictest gun laws in the country. I mean, <laughs> and you got Biden. Think about it. This is where Joe Biden lives. No solutions. He lives here. He doesn't come here and stay here sometimes. Joe Biden lives here. This should be the safest city and the safest state in the nation. And he just said today at Howard University, which is a stone's throw from um, Petworth, where this neighborhood is uh, they talking about. He just he just said today that white supremacy is the biggest threat to America. And he lives in this city, and I promise you, ninety nine point seven percent of this is sons. Oh, we know you, you should said 99.9. .9. Well, every once in a while, Ombrito is at the fool. 
like you said, it's um, election season. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember when he said during uh, his first run, when he goes, um, I don't care what anyone tells you, a black man invented the light bulb. Louis Lattimore, he didn't, he 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 helped with the filament. The, 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 right. The, yeah. But what he was imp implying is that don't believe that Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. He, he, you know, he didn't. He wasn't that nuanced about it. He goes, "I don't care what anybody tells you." Yeah. I think he was speaking to some. Uh, he, was he was just pandering. He was just pandering. Yeah, he was just pandering. And then that yeah. what he's doing, Howard is just pandering for folks. That's what he's doing. Yeah, it's it's, it's sickening, man. Um, yeah, this this city right here, you don't even. He, he don't have to look no further. He don't have to talk about Chicago like everybody. Look, the violence in Chicago, nah, motherfucker. The violence where you live at, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, this should be safe. This city should be safe. Walk <laughs> down and real shit. Yeah, this happens yeah. where you live. And the strictest gun laws, too? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Perhaps what may be even more troubling is that that total is still fewer than the number of shootings D.C. has observed on average just 132 days into the year. MPD data shows typically D.C. sees a little more than seven shootings each day in 2023. But the crime rate around here really doesn't surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't at all. It's just become so normal. It just becomes normal. In the end, Brown told us something we've heard time and time again on D.C. streets, a call for peace. Help each other. Get together. Just stop the killing. Now, this meeting here in Pedworth is going to be taking place any minute now. You can actually see some people participating right now. As for solutions to all of this, you may know that the mayor held a public safety summit earlier this week where people tried to come up with ideas as to how to stop all of this gun crime here in the district. And many people said, including Yolanda Brown right there, that they want more police officers on D.C. streets. I want to see them gliders doing that painting at around 10 p.m. at night when, when the news crew is gone. See how that works yeah, out. They they know to you know what I'm saying like it's just the task, it's an agreement. Everyone knows, you know, like don't do that. <laughs> don't don't do that at night, man. They know. Now you may see one walking a dog, like dog gotta poop at night. They may take the dog out to poop or something like that. But you know, everyone knows, man. Sun sons rule the night, man. Everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, that, that you like, the night. Uh, yeah, they're like at night, that's their, their it's their world, and we've agreed to that. Like everybody's agreed to that. Um, by the way they vote, by the things they protest for, everybody's agreed to it. And we will shoot you in the daytime too. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. D.C. has a serious problem with crime. We've told you district leaders say they're trying to find solutions. This is how bad it is. Right now, MPD data says violent crime is up 11 percent compared to this time last year. So many lives altered by this violence. Now the mayor says she has an idea to fix it. The solution involves keeping repeat offenders off the streets. Our John Henry. <laughs> Why is that a novel idea? Why is that like. If, if I promise in 2019, she was the mayor in 2019. In 2019, that would she wouldn't have had to say that. That just would have been what she, that would have been normal. Fast forward to 2023, she's like a fucking genius for coming up with that. Yeah, we should have them stay in jail. Shit, that's a good idea. She's getting applauded for something that was just normal four years ago, three years ago. It's insane, it? man. And she's talking about repeat offenders. Why not just first time offenders? Well, yeah, but these guys are like they're never first time offenders. Like these guys' first offenses when they're 13, man. Or like 12, 11. <laughs> yeah. They're never a first time offender. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to get a first time offender. He's like, you just not. I have four felonies. You know what I'm saying? Holy shit! I, really? Yeah, I've, I've, I've. You know, I was getting arrested when I was 15. Not arrested, but detained. They take me home to my mother. This, this, you're not gonna catch the guy who carjacks you 
ain't there's no way he's a first time offender. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible. Hell no. <laughs> so I think okay, the fact that you said the fact that you said that you got four felonies kind of tell leads me to believe there might be a solution. Why you you kind of got because you kind of got fixed. You you're not still he's still old. Man. He's I'm still old. a son man. He's still a son man. I'm, I'm old and I'm like oh I stay away from sons right now. Like for, <laughs> for instance, man, like I can work too. Like I can work a job. I can work a job. I you gotta you, it it's a miracle, man. It's a miracle I'm not doing fucking a bunch of times, just like a bunch of other guys. I mean, it's a bunch of it, it's just a miracle. It's I'm I'm thankful for, for the grace of God. I'm not gonna sit here Thanks. and be like oh, it's because of something I did and da, 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 because it wasn't. I wasn't I was doing everything to go the other way. So what it just it, it it's just it's just the way the cookie crumbled, man. Same here. Violence. Now the mayor Please. says she has an idea to fix it. The solution involves keeping repeat offenders off the streets. Our John Henry joins us now to break down the mayor's plan from outside of MPD headquarters. The mayor's office told us we should expect it to introduce legislation either tomorrow or Monday to reform the pretrial detention process here in D.C. A number of people told us at the Crime Summit yesterday they believe that needs to be fixed in order to fight crime here in D.C. Right now in D.C., if you're arrested for allegedly committing a crime, there's a good chance you'll be released pre-trial. The pre-trial. Yeah, that's so true that they call it on on PR personal cognizance. They don't do bond. They just release you on your personal cognizance in D.C. So you don't have to pay nothing. You just fucking get out. Trial Services Agency for D.C. said in fiscal year 2022, 85 percent of cases resulted in defendants being released pre-trial. Eighty five percent of the people that were arrested. That's were nuts. Released. They basically let everybody back on the streets. Eighty five percent. Literally, think about it. Think about if you were a basketball player and you shot 85% from the fucking field. Nice. Or you were a football quarterback and you completed 85% of your passes. Like, I mean, or you screwed 85% of the girls you hollered at. Like, yeah. that's a Bro. fucking lot. 85% is a huge right. number, Jack. And now eighty five percent. Think about how many of those like uh, reoffended again, or just some another. And then crime. they get out again. Yeah, yeah. Most of these are reoffended because you. This is counting every arrest. So it's like you know what I'm saying. Like you get out, you get out again. You call, you get out again. You call, you get out again. You call. I, listen, that's why I tell you, man. Like it's a like. I did a lot of stuff that got no papers, man. DC, they have a thing called no paper. Where it's not even case, it's not even them dismissing the case. It's erasing the case. Case dismissed meaning there's still a record of your shit. In DC, they got a thing called no paper. You get in front of the judge, and he just say no paper. You sign some shit and then you just walk out the courtroom. But whatever happened, never happened. It's never brought up again. It just, oh, it's like a fucking magic eraser for crime. Anybody from DC know what I'm talking about? No paper. They just no paper shit. If judges are mandated, they are required to release people back into the community, which happens right now because of a law enacted in the District of Columbia back in 1992. But D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said Wednesday her office will soon introduce legislation aimed at stopping reoffenders, people convicted of violent crimes in the past, of getting pretrial release after committing new alleged crimes in the future. We think the expectations in the community is that if you've committed a violent crime, you're you're convicted of a violent crime and you commit, commit another one, 
that you should be detained. U.S. Attorney for D.C. Matt Graves said he welcomes having a conversation about how to reform pretrial detention practices as it's not been a focus in recent years. Candidly, that has not been where the dialogue has been over the last decade or so. The dialogue has been over how can we have more people released because they have not yet been convicted. Now, some people are concerned about this idea, including Black Lives Matter DC, which says the presumption- <laughs> Black Lives Matter is concerned about this shit. This is what they, think about it. Think about all these stories. The first time we hear Black Lives Matter is because they're trying, they're concerned about them clamping down on the crime. You didn't hear Black Lives Matter with all those black bodies lying in the street. That is insane. Over the last decade or so, crazy. the dialogue has been over how can we have more people released because they have not yet been convicted. Now, some people are concerned about this idea, including Black Lives Matter DC, which says the presumption of innocence is supposed to exist and include people who have been arrested or convicted in the past. John Henry. W yeah, but none of the niggas is innocent. They all did. Listen, man, it's so hard to get arrested in D.C., man. It's so, or, or bagged or whatever they call it, man. It's so hard to get arrested. Cops ain't just going around scooping niggas up. You did that shit, man. You did that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? When the cops fuck with the cops, arrest your ass, you did that shit, Jack. This ain't, I ain't even trying to act like no activist. I'm going to act like a dude that know, man. When you, you, because I mean, I ain't, I ain't on trial for nothing. I'm not trying to play no games. Man, them niggas did that shit. Well, you see a nigga in the back of a squad car, he yeah, did that shit. shit man. The cops just don't come and snatch niggas yeah, up from that. Man, he, he did that shit, man. Period.